So in this uh, short presentation, I would like to share with you some of the recent results on the estimate of detection rates and population properties of the laser detectable double white dwarfs derived on the um, SDSS and SPI spectroscopic samples. And the two reasons why we return to the modeling of the galactic double white dwarf population are mainly because these models help us to quantitatively define these are science objective and figures of merit, and because they help us in estimating to what degree the double white dwarf foreground will affect the detectability of other LISA sources. But differently from our previous estimates based on the binary population synthesis technique, here we use the results obtained from observations. And an efficient way of finding double white dwarfs is to look for radial velocity variations in large spectroscopic samples of white dwarf stars. And if the white dwarf is in a binary system, when we follow its spectrum over time, we observe that its spectral lines are moving slightly back and forth as the white dwarf follows its orbit. So back in 2012, Mao Zetao uh, analyzed a large sample consisting of more than 4,000 white dwarfs observed with SDSS. And for each white dwarf, the, they look at the maximum radial velocity difference um, of the spectral line uh, for each single white dwarf observed at different epochs. So on the right, you see the histogram of this quantity. And you can see that this distribution has a very wide core that extends up to 250 kilometers per second. And um, it also, uh, so the systems constituting the core are either single white dwarfs with large measurement errors or actually double white dwarfs, but we cannot be certain about them. However, systems in the tail of this distribution are likely to actually be double white dwarfs. So these systems are good candidates for targeted follow-up observations. But to learn about the properties of the population, we can, uh, uh, we, uh, can compare uh, this distribution uh, to theoretical models. And we can construct uh, theoretical models based on a set of very simple assumptions listed on this slide. We can assume that the mass of the primary white dwarf follows the mass distribution of single white dwarfs. And then the mass of the secondary is such that uh, the distribution of mass ratio is flat. Uh, we also assume that at the time of double white dwarf formation, the distribution of orbital separation follows uh, a power law with power law index alpha. And after the formation, double white dwarfs um, separations changes uh, due to gravitational wave radiation only. And finally, we assume that the star formation, uh, which also influences the double white dwarf separation uh, distribution at the present day, uh, was constant over the last um, 10 giga years. And you can see the obtained models uh, here on the right as colored lines. And in particular, the authors uh, found that the theoretical distribution depend mainly on two parameters, the power law index alpha and the double white dwarf fraction. So these two can be derived by direct comparison of models with the observations. And this has been done in uh, Mauss et al. Uh, 2012, based on the SDSS sample. Uh, and the result represented here in, uh, as a blue contour in the alpha FWD parameter space. And later, uh, a similar study has been done by Mauss and Halkun in 2017, this time based on the supernova progenitor survey, in SPI in short, represented in green here. And the joint constraint based on these two samples uh, is shown in orange. So specifically, the best fit based on the joint um, uh, sample uh, gives us um, the value of the power law of uh, uh, minus 1.3, uh, 
and the fraction of double white dwarfs per each single white dwarf uh, of about 10%. So we can use this exact same um, results and uh, uh, best fit values for modeling now double white dwarf population for LISA. So here I'm showing you explicitly from left to right uh, the shape of the chirp mass distribution, uh, the present day orbital separation distribution that was translated into gravitational wave frequencies uh, given the binary masses. This is uh, um, based on the exact same recipe as in, uh, as in the studies that I just showed to you. And finally, to estimate the gravitational wave amplitude, we also need to assign uh, double word distances to our binaries. And we do that by sampling double word dwarf positions from, uh, from a disk with an exponential radial density and as a thermal vertical distribution. And finally, we need to establish how many binaries uh, we have to draw. And we can do that by um, simply multiplying the, the disk volume, and that is just uh, given by the integral of our uh, stellar density distribution, by the white dwarf density, and here we use the value estimated based on the 20 parse example of white dwarfs in uh, Gaia DR2, and by multiplying by the double white dwarf fraction derived based on SDSS and SPI. And uh, using this, we obtain 25 million binaries within the LISA band. So we fed this population to the pipeline recently presented in Carnesius et al. 2021, which self-consistently estimates the sample of individually resolved signals and unresolved foreground. This is through an uh, iterative uh, process. And we obtained uh, 60,000 resolved uh, double white dwarfs uh, in this population with the signal to noise ratios uh, higher than the threshold of seven. And those are represented here in gray in the usual characteristic strain frequency parameter space. And in orange here, you see the, the foreground produced by this population. And in particular, you can see that the um, obtained background, foreground, uh, has a significantly different shape compared to the default binary population synthesis-based model that we used within the consortium. Uh, and that is shown here by the dashed uh, black line. Now to check uh, the robustness of our model, we perform some variations to it. For example, we consider the most extreme combinations of alpha and FWD within this one sigma contour of the um, joint uh, as SDSS and SPI uh, constraint. So for the lowest possible values of alpha and FWD, we obtained an increase of 20% in LISA detection. And for the highest possible values, we have a decrease of about the same magnitude. So the other variations that we consider fall um, within this uh, range and are affecting mainly the white dwarf masses. And as you can see, they produce um, a very moderate effect of at most 4 and 4%. Uh, percent. And this um, plot uh, gives us confidence that uh, our observationally motivated model is robust. So in conclusion, uh, the model that I just show, uh, showed to you based on the SDSS and SPI sample produces from two to five times more individually detected double white words than uh, previously published in the literature. And it also produces a different shape of the galactic confusion foreground. And with that, um, I will be happy to discuss details and implications during the meeting. Thank you.